viewer. We thank you for joining us once more. Uh, today with you is the Bunga team. Uh, my name is uh, Jemima Simba, and I am serving with Rose Bavili from Bunga Central Church. Thank you. Um, as you know, we are discussing our lesson, and we are discussing the lesson um, which is entitled The Book of Job. We are concentrating on lesson four, and it talks about God and human suffering. Uh, kindly, Rose, before we start, help us and give us an, a word of prayer. Let's pray. Blessed are you, O Lord God, our Father. We thank you so much. We bless your name. We thank you for the gift of life that you still give to us, even up today. We thank you for your loving kindness towards us. Thank you so much for everything that you do for us, for the provision, for the protection. Fathers, we're going to learn of you, Father. We pray for the Holy Spirit. May you grant us the wisdom, the grace, your presence. Keep away the hand of the evil one that we may learn in peace. It's my humble prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We are concentrating on um, the book of Job, as I said. And we are looking at God and human suffering. Our memory text comes from the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, and it says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will, wo tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. First of all, I want us to um, talk about the book of Job. Mm. There is something unique about it. Something quite different mm. from the other books of the Bible. Um, it's one of the very first books that were written. Mm. One of the very first books that were written by Moses, actually. And uh, it has no relation, direct relation with Israel, because almost all the other books of the Bible are related. There is something about Israel. Mm. The Exodus, the Numbers, and all those other books. When you go to the New Te uh, Testament, mm. uh, it, it all has a, a relation. But the book of Job is removed from all this. Mm. And um, the reason is, it was written while Moses was in the Midian, uh, shortly after he had been called by God mm. to start ministry. And it's one of the very first books that he wrote, but one of the most um, beautiful things about the book of Job is that um, it focuses on us mm. and God. It focuses on our <coughs> suffering. It focuses on pain. It focuses on the reality of sin in our lives. Mm. And um, in relation to God and how he comes in to help us in our day-to-day -day lives, I want to believe it's a day-to-day -day book if yeah. that's the right word to say. Because when you concentrate on it, when you look at it, when you read about it, it's what we've all gone through. And it does not matter whether we are um, Christians or not Christians, or whether we believe in God or we don't believe in God. We all die. We all fall sick. We all suffer. And so <coughs> the book of Job highlights our day-to-day -day work with God. Mm. When we look at uh, one of the reasons as to why it was written. It's unique in a way that um, it helps us draw um, ourselves to the challenges that we normally have. It focuses <coughs> us on the great controversy, the war between good and bad, mm -hmm. the war between uh, God and Satan, mm. and uh, our role in it. And when we see how the book of Job begins, Satan goes to God and tells him the reason as to why this man is um, trusting you and uh, doing all the things that you want is because you have given him the protection that he needs. Mm -hmm. He has everything. Um, in other words, you have bribed him. You know, you have bribed him to love you. Uh, today, sometimes when we suffer so much, when we have things that are not going our way, we tend to wonder, 
what is exactly happening. We tend to question whether God is really existing. And so we, we, we bring into picture the fact that this is what we are trying to tell the devil, that in actual sense, we are now not praising God because we are seeing a little bad here. This is very different from what happened to Job because he stood amid all the suffering. And um, when we get challenges today, I think one of the lessons we need to pick out of the book of Job is however much we may get the challenges today, we need to stand the way he stood. Mm. Our faith is tested most of the time. And many of the times we are like, maybe we are not going to be able to go through this. Mm. Maybe now it's time for us to give up on God. And maybe this, maybe that. But um, Job stood to the very end in the worst of situations where most of us would have actually denounced God and moved on. He stood and he stood for God. Mm. And in that great controversy, God won. And so the question today is, can we stand? Amid the challenges that may stand, can we be able to stand for God and shame the devil? And um, it's one of the reasons why I seem to love this book, mm. because <coughs> it draws us and to ourselves and to our relationship with God. Mm. Rosa, before we go to God in nature, mm. do you think you want to tell us something more? Yeah, one thing that I've, I've noticed that is interesting, it's about the memory text. We read it from Matthew, like you read it from mm. Matthew chapter 6, verse, uh, verse 34. 30, 34. It, is, it is interesting how Jesus brings it all together and he says that, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its, its own, own things. things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Jesus Christ, way after Job had existed, comes and reminds us that suffering is part of life. Mm, true. That suffering is part of our life, our day-to-day -day life. One of the things that is unique, like you said, about Job's uh, Job as a book, it is that it highlights the fact that human suffering is universal. Mm, it mm. is not limited to it's the Jews, to, to the, the Gentiles, Gentiles, to the Muslim, to the Seven Adventists. Everyone that is on this earth goes through something that is so hard. Mm. You and I have to agree that we, we, we all go through some situations and we cannot explain them. Mm. We cannot understand them. And probably that is the reason why God, way before any other book was written, inspires Moses to go ahead and write mm. the book mm. of Job to show us that since that day that Adam gave up yes. the power, the dominion of this earth, suffering is bound to happen. Mm -hmm. And yes, like you said, it gives us the hope. Just like Job endured mm. and he stood faithful to God. It is a lesson for us to pick so that we will stand and be faithful to God. Amen. Because yes, suffering is part of this world, but we are assured by the victory of Jesus Christ that, you will that he will win. deliver us. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Rose. Thank you so much. <coughs> um, when we look at God in nature, mm. We are looking at Romans 1, uh -huh. uh, verses 18 to 20. It says, But God shows his anger from heaven against it's all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For, uh, for ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, mm. his internal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Mm. What are we talking about here? Actually, the question says, what is Paul saying here? Mm. Rosa wants us to be honest in this. Mm. When you look around, before mm. you've read the Bible, mm. before you've uh, basically understood God, mm. Many times you marvel at creation. I know. You look at a caterpillar, the way it moves. You look at a snake, the way it moves, the way it feeds. You look at a baby, the way they come into this world. Mm -hmm. You look at plants, the way they grow. You look at uh, things that reproduce themselves. Mm -hmm. Look at bacteria that reproduces itself. And at the end of the day, it multiplies within no time. 
how a human being grows from no wisdom at all to wisdom and uh, greatness. Mm -hmm. Everything in creation um, tells us of the power of God. And um, I want to believe that uh, when we choose not to trust God, we make a choice, but most of the time it's not dependent on um, uh, what, what, how can I term it? Like we, may, we make a choice sometimes not to trust God mm. or, or to doubt his creative power or to doubt his, uh, his authority. Mm -hmm. But many times we keep our eyes blind to what is the most obvious for us. Because I want to believe that when you walk, let's say, like in a forest mm -hmm. and you look at the different plantation and you look at the, dif the nature, the different things, it is only enough to tell you how magnificent God is. Mm -hmm. And in, uh, in our day-to-day -day lives, there are things that happen and you say to yourself, this would not have happened if it wasn't for God. Mm. I mean, there are things that happen and just blow us. And at the end of the day, when you look at them, you're like, I would never have gone this far mm. if it wasn't for God. Have you ever been in a vehicle and you really see a border border guy ahead of you mm. <coughs> with a funny mistake that he has made and you're really sure you're getting an accident? And somehow, in the blink of an eye, you see your car moving aside and you see the border border person moving aside. Like and it. somehow... Mm. With no power or, I don't know. It, I mean, it has happened and the accident hasn't happened. But when, when, when trouble seems to come our way, we seem to question a lot about mm. God's existence. Mm. This is what they're trying to talk about here. Paul says, we have no excuse. The people that do not believe in God, they have no excuse whatsoever mm. not to believe in God. Mm. Why? Because he's everywhere. He's in everything. He's in the trees. He's in the birds. He's in the animals. He's in everything mm. that he has created. And when we look at these things, we're supposed to appreciate and say, I mean, this is God. This is God at work mm. because of the mighty um, work, work that, that he has done. Mm. Then we know that he is our God. Now, um, we all know what the scientists believe. Mm. The lesson talks about a great scientist by the name of, um, sorry, the name has gone, but he's a very renowned scientist. Hmm. And he says there is no God, but he's a well-read person. He's a person that has traveled wide. In your brain, your simple brain, your <laughs> simple brain that hasn't read much, you see everything around you and you get to appreciate God. In his big brain mm. that has accomplished much, mm. done much, mm. he says, there There's is no, no God. God. And in your brain you wonder, how possible can that be? But the natural world reveals so much to us about the existence of God. Mm. The irony of uh, the scientist's belief is the more complex life gets, the harder it becomes for them to explain how all this has come to happen. Mm. And so they seem to say there was someone that created this and another and another and another until they get to the point of there was someone that was not created but created all this. Mm. And so the question is, so who created them? At the end of the day, mm. we are told of the reality of God. And his, um, his work in our lives is seen. However bad our, our world has fallen, mm. God still speaks to us even through nature. Mm -hmm. And he still shows his power to us even through nature. And so many times um, when we seem to be doubting his existence, his mm. power, his authority, his uh, ability to save, his ability to help, we may need to go back to nature because the simplest of it all is nature. I know. It communicates to us about God. Mm. It always tells us about <coughs> God. Mm. And you know, this is what I believe, that 
when you look at nature like you've said i'm sure so many people look at so many things the mountains mm -hmm. the rivers the seas the, the oceans and they marvel at that how, okay, whatever how. in their brain that has created that and this is what i want to believe that many people come to believe that there must be a superpower mm. behind such creation. Mm. But this is what happens. So many times when suffering sets in, then it brings the doubt of God. Exactly. Like we will see we later in the lesson, well. that one of the reasons as to why people have denounced God and have declared themselves atheists mm. is because of the human suffering. True. They sit down and say, yes, they are, they are, they are, they are beautiful the, the creations. Beautiful. There is evidence of creative power of God. But how can a loving God, all-powerful, all-knowing, leave this suffering to happen? To happen. That is when the confusion sets in. And yes, we want to, to, to be thankful to God because in such a moment when the world is getting more confused and every day is getting more worries, He gives us the book of Job. He tells us, yes, in that human suffering, there is still nature that exists. Amen. Nature that someone that is beyond human being must have created. That is and actually there's one thing that is suffering. even more wonderful. Who sustains nature? I know. I mean, who controls we, we. the big oceans don't never to go out to of go their to, limits? To land. Who holds the sky mm -hmm. up there never to so fall? The fall. stars, the mountains, the galaxies that we get to hear and read about. Paul says, that what has been created reveals God. Mm. Like you've said, people just choose not to believe in God. But as Christians, we have even more evidence in the Bible. When you look at the nature and probably you get some setback, when True. you probably are going through some hard situation, we have the Bible that reveals more of oh, who God, God is. is. God will never cease. Actually, someone has termed nature to be the second Bible. Mm. <laughs> and I think it would be right. It, it would be right. It would be right. Because when everything doesn't seem to make sense, mm. you look at nature and in your brain you will always wonder, how do the trees on the mountain choose to stay there? In spite of the gravity? Mm -hmm. And they never mm -hmm. fall. Look at you us. Know? You don't even have to go beyond us. Have you ever wondered the complexity of the human, human body? Being. How we think? the connection to the mind, and all that. If there is no God, then who sustains our lives? Who created it? Who sees to it that we live today, tomorrow, Every and the other, other day? day? There must be a God, and Amen. nature reveals that. Amen. Thank you, Rose. Mm -hmm. Come in with um, everything came from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Nothing came from itself. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to talk about the earliest books. Mm. Tell us about it. Well, there is an argument. The lesson writer calls it cosmological argument. Mm. And it's basically the idea that nothing came from itself and that nothing created itself. Mm. Instead, whatever was created was came created by something else before it. And whatever created that had was to be created by something, something else, else before it. But before it. The lesson writer goes on and say, I mean, it goes on and, until we stop at something uncreated. Exactly. And who else would that be but the Other God, God. De depicted in the scripture? Let's go and read Colossians. Mm. Shall I read Colossians chapter 1? Verses 16 and 17. Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. The Bible says, For by him we are all things created that are, that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible, mm. whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by, by him God. and for him. Amen. And is before all things and by him all things are held together. From the scripture we know that God created these things. Thrones, principalities, dominions, the beautiful nature, us, the Bible tells us that, yes, there is someone that created these things. And verse 17 goes ahead and talks about the sustainability. sustainability of these things. It's before all things and by him all things are held together. Mm. As people are getting worried every day, thinking probably this world will fall well apart, done. we have assurance from the Bible that but everything is, is held together by the hand of God. We will go ahead and also read from... 
John mm. chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1 verse, verses 1 to 3. The Bible, read, the Bible says, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Mm. Oh, I was supposed, sorry, I was supposed to read from 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Mm. From the scriptures, Jemima, we get to know that, yes, the scientists may conclude that we came from nothing. Can you imagine? We came from nowhere. And someone sits down and reads like a million books and concludes that we are a product of chance and accident. And yet you with your simple brain. I mean, that is where I get to wonder. Do we sometimes get a problem when we overread? <laughs> Do we sometimes get a problem when we acquire too much knowledge? Because, see, the funniest of it all is God created Saturn. Mm -hmm. I mean... The person that creates all the doubts in our heads mm. has been created by the same person against whom he sets everything else. Mm. So if a person that has read widely mm. can be able to reason as that, I mean, sometimes I'm like, maybe I should stop where I am and not read any more books because at one point, probably I'll get confused. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know, but, but I think, I think... The reason as to why when people read and study too much, they, they, they tend to go off course. It's because as we study and get into so much of everything, there's a pride that grows in us. Okay. And you know, one thing that I've somehow learning to believe is that faith is a gift. Mm -hmm. God gives us a gift. a gift to believe in him. You know, the Bible... Is, is something that God has to reveal and inspires you to understand. That is why you will find very educated people, but they don't know the Bible. The Someone Bible. goes to the seminary for 10 years, but they still come out and they cannot explain a verse. They true, do, true, true. You know? So and at, yet they've passed. And, and yet they have passed. And you find someone that has not gone to school, explain they understand the God. They explain the Bible. They believe in God and, and they follow him. So anyway, Newton says, that from his theory, he says that nothing created the universe. Mm. That is his conclusion. Mm. But what is logical? Mm. <laughs> I mean, to believe that nothing created this world, <laughs> oh, that there must that be there must an have eternal been God that, actually that created, created the world. It. I mean, what is easier? Is it easier to believe that the world, the, the universe? Came well, from because that? I think <laughs> the, the theory has to go on. Somehow, someone has got to carry the theory on. I want to believe mm. it's because. <clears throat> At that point, someone mm. has got to carry the theory on. Mm. But, but it's very funny. And down there, I love the way they say, error is error. Mm. Even when spoken by a great scientist, it's, it's still error. Yeah. When they fail to understand God, they fail to understand God. When they fail to understand the reason for their existence, then they fail to understand in spite of how great scientists they are. Mm -hmm. And one thing, before we leave, nothing came from itself. One thing that I want to assure you, dear viewer, that yes, we may go through a lot of suffering and we may go through moments which we can never sit down and explain mm. why we are going through that. But there's one thing that is sure. God created us. Amen. And God sustain, sustains us because he says by him, everything is held together. The earliest of books. The lesson writer brings us and tells us that there's a question that always comes to our mind. That, yes, we have seen the creative power of God. Yes, we believe that God is, is powerful, is all-knowing, is all-loving. He's all authority. But how can you explain the problem that happened to us? Mm. How can God be all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful, and so much evil exists? And so much suffering exists. Jenima, you've heard of plane cra mm. crashes. You've heard of accidents. We've heard of children dying. And you wonder what is happening. Mm. But there's one thing that lesson writer brings to our notice. That yes, the reason as to why probably God writes or inspires Moses to write the book 
of Job early at the beginning, at the beginning before any other book was written was because he was aware of the fact of this suffering. Mm. And from that book, we, we are shown and we are given the understanding that yes, suffering is part of us, but God is there with Still us. Existing. The lesson right tells us that we are never alone. Amen. God let us know early on that we are not left alone in our pain and suffering, mm. but he is there. He knows all about it. And we can have the hope that you will make it right in the end. Amen. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what is happening in your life. But this is what I know through the Bible mm. and through the lesson from Job. That God will bring an end to that situation. Amen. And you know there's that eternal hope that yes, you may die suffering. Because from the Bible, later in the lesson we'll see that there are people that died actually mm. in their suffering. Mm. John was killed and many True. other people. But God there's one killed. hope that is standing. God will bring an end to this. If not on this earth, there then is that grand in heaven. Amen. Mm. Um, just something small. Mm. There is something they tell us down here. Mm. That though the Bible teaches us mm. about the reality mm. of an all-knowing, mm. all-powerful, all loving God. Mm. It also teaches us about the reality of evil, mm -hmm. about the reality of uh, human suffering and mm. war. Mm. Now, they emphasize evil is not an excuse mm. to disbelieve in God. True. We should not say that um, because I don't believe in God, or oh, because there is death, then there is no God. It's not an excuse. Mm. And we shouldn't, I mean, evil shouldn't be an excuse of not knowing. The way they say ignorance is not, um, how do they say it? Ignorance is not um, an excuse. Mm. When you go to court, uh, you are driving on the wrong lane and you knocked. It's not anyone's fault. It is your yes. fault, mm. yes. So, so that's what they're trying to say, that evil is not an excuse to disbelieve God. Mm. And Job showed at us that in the midst of his utter despondence, mm. when he was at his worst, he never ever any one time questioned the existence of God. At any one time. And I want to believe he's one of those people that have suffered so much in their lives. Mm. And so the question is, instead, why were all these things happening to him when he believed God? It's because of sin. Mm. It's because of our sinful nature. It's because what our grandparents did brought us to this. But the, the utter hope that we have is God is still with us in all this. Mm -hmm. And when we cling to him, we are bound to become winners. The greatest master says in Matthew... <clears throat> Chapter 24, verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Mm. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. Amen. Jesus Christ was aware. And he tells us, yes, suffering will be there. Yeah. So that gives us hope that, yes, Christ was aware of it. And he says in Matthew 6, verse 34. Actually, that is our memory verse. Mm. He says... That therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient is the day. Is the day sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Amen. Jesus Christ, do not worry about it. He's in control. Thank you, Rose. Mm. Um, quickly, we will go to the dilemma. I want us to read from uh, the book of Job. Okay. Verse 6. Uh, sorry, chapter 6. Verses 4. 4 to 8. Job 6. Do you want me to read? Okay, you can go ahead and read. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me, are within me. The poison therefore drinks up my spirit. The terrors of God do set themselves in array against me. Does the wild donkey bray when it has grass? Or the ox laws, laws over its fodder? Can that which is tasteless be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? Mm. The things that my soul refused to touch are loathsome food to me. All that I might have my request. 
Oh, and that God would grant me the thing that I long for. Okay. Um, we, we may not read Job 9, mm. 1 to 12, mm. but it basically, um, Job 9 and Job uh, 6, mm. they basically try to explain to us the existence of God. Mm. There is one thing that is consistent through the suffering of Job. Mm. We are all humans, and uh, when we are humans, suffering is inevitable because we are in a sinful world. He had to complain. At one point, he would complain because life was really hard on him. Mm -hmm. But even amidst his worst, Job talks about the mightiness of God. Mm -hmm. He talks about the existence and he proves the existence of God and his mighty power through the skies, the heavens, the birds, the donkeys, and everything around him. Mm. And he says that even when you take me to my death, I will still trust you because mm. you're my God. Now, what, what can we pick from this? We are thinking, if Job suffered this much, if we suffer this much and mm. yet we believe God, then why do we suffer? It still goes back to the same thing. Mm. But we suffer because we are in a sinful world. And when trials come our way, it is um, with purpose. We know that there is hope after the suffering. It's quite different when someone who is an atheist mm. and tri trials uh, were to come to them, mm. their answer would be, well, this is meaningless. This is purposeless, is purposeless mm -hmm. you know. <coughs> but we who have hope, we know that when we suffer today, tomorrow we have hope. Mm. That we will regain and we will walk, uh, rise up and everything will be okay again. Mm. And um, this helps us because if you have noticed, when you suffer, the impact of pain on you who believes in God is quite different from the people that do not believe in God. They seem to have nothing to hold on, mm -hmm. and we seem to have quite a lot to hold on to. Mm -hmm. I think it puts us on a different level. And today, viewer, it would be very nice, it would be very good if you clung to Jesus when times get bad. Why? Because without him, we are nothing. Mm. With him, we can have everything. But without him, all hope is lost. And we just can't afford to lose the hope. It is true. Because when we lose the hope, mm. then we've lost it all. You know? Mm. And then they say, if the universe was godless, then the answer would be that um, life is purely materialistic. And in which human beings are merely the accidental byproducts of atoms and molecules. Mm. But because we know there is a living God, we hold more than that. There's, Quickly, Rose, mm, as we wind there's up. There's one thing about the dilemma. You know, like you've said, as Christians, we, we ought to be on a different level when suffering sets in. Yes, it is true. We are on a different level. And do you know why? Mm -hmm. Because for, for someone who does not believe in God, for the atheists, it is very easy for them to conclude and to give this up. A, B, C, D happened because life is meaningless. Mm -hmm. There's no purpose. Mm -hmm. We don't know why we're here. We are a product of chance and accident. <laughs> it is very easy for them to come to a very easy conclusion that we are here for nothing. True. But as a Christian, Jemima, you know God exists. Mm. You know God has all the power. You know God has all the ability to do whatever. Because he says all things are possible with God. Mm. And Jemima, you're faced with something that the non-believers come and ask you, where is your God? Mm. Now, it is the same thing that is happening with, with Job. He knows that God does exist. But then he's facing this calamity, this suffering. That is the dilemma. Where mm -hmm. is God in this Indeed. whole thing? But there's one thing that, like you said, Job teaches us. Even then, God never doubt, Job never doubted the existence God. of God. As a matter of fact, in, in so many verses down here, Job 10, if you read 8 to, to, to 14, Job declares and tells God, your hands have fashioned me. Mm. You have designed me, yet you totally destroy me. There's one thing that I got from here. Job, however bitter he was, 
he directs his complaints to God. To God, not to anyone else. Not to but anyone to God. else. Mm. He tells yes. He tells God, yes, I know you have created me. You have fashioned me. You have designed me. Yet you destroy me. Mm. When you cannot explain the situation, when you cannot explain what is going on, where do you direct your complaint? Instead of coming when down to a conclusion that God does not exist, that is something for, for someone else that does not believe in God. For a Christian, you go back to the mm. God that you believe. Thank you. That's the only way to solve that dilemma. The theodicy. Mm. We are looking at Romans 3, 1 to 4. Mm. Then what's the advantage of being a Jew? Is there any value in the ceremony of circumcision? Yes, there are great benefits. First of all, the Jews are interested with the whole revelation of God. Some of them were unfaithful, but just because they were unfaithful, does that mean God will be unfaithful? Of course, no. Even if everyone is a liar, God is true. Mm -hmm. As the scriptures say about him, you will be proved right in what you say, and you will win your case mm. in court. Mm. What are we talking about here? We are talking about uh, Paul and how he was trying to explain and justify God's existence in this sinful world. Mm. Or um, he, he, let's say he was vindicating God mm. against the sinfulness of nature and uh, his presence still standing. Down here they say, before humans, before angels, before the whole universe, the goodness of God will be revealed despite the evil that unfolds in the world. Whether Satan fights tooth and nail mm. to see that we are distracted, whether he fights tooth and nail to see that um, we do not see the goodness of God, mm -hmm. when we choose God, mm. we will stand for God. And trust me, when we choose God, then God will do his own justification. Sure. And at the end of the day, he will come out a winner. Why? Because he's the creator. He's the creator of it all. Down here they say the results of rebellion, the fruits of setting aside the divine statures, have been laid open to the view of all created intelligences. God is wisdom, his justice, and his goodness stand fully vindicated. Hmm. His dealings in the great controversy have been conducted with respect to the internal good for his people and for the good of all the worlds that he was that work that has been have been created. However hard it might be for us to understand, mm. immersed <coughs> as we are in a world of sin and suffering, when it is all over, we will be able to see the goodness and justice and love and fairness of God mm. in all his dealings with humanity, with Satan, with sin. Mm. Many times when we are suffering, we ask, why did God have to allow Satan to keep going? The reason is, if God had removed Satan at that point, would we have understood him? We would never. We would never even have understood that God is a just God. Mm. Because at the end of the day, we would have said, probably God destroyed Satan for a reason. What is our hope today? God is dealing with sin in the best way possible. And when this terrible experience of sin is over, mm. we will be able to shout, great and marvelous are your works, Lord, mm. God, Almighty. Just and true are your ways, mm. O King of, of the, the saints. saints. At the end of the day, God will be justified. Mm. In your closing remarks, tell us. Uh, I just want to say something small about what you've been talking mm. about. If there's anything that atheists have used to condemn and to pin down the Christian the Christians, mm. it's it's the fact of God's goodness in the face of evil. True. But like you've said, that God is dealing with humanity, is mm. dealing with sin, and is dealing with the devil in the best way possible. True. And Jemima, if there's any time, if there's any period, if there's any generation that the devil has painted God gray, 
it is in this generation. Mm -hmm. If there's any generation that Satan has shown Christian, Christians and the non-believers that God does not exist, God does not love you so much, God does not care about this world, it is in this generation, through suffering, through Pain. selfishness, through murder. I mean, there's a lot that is going on. And so many people have concluded that God does not care indeed. Mm. But there's one thing that lesson, lesson writer wants to bring to our attention. That is the picture of the cross. That yes, all may be happening, but there's one thing for a Christian to sit down and contemplate about. If God does not love us, how then comes how he sent he his sent only his begotten son. son to die for a sinner like you? True. I mean, what more love can, can there be? Whatever you're going through, there's one thing that is for sure. God cares. Amen. God loves us. God sees to it that we overcome this world. Jesus Christ says that in this world you're going to have so many tribulations. But take heart because I have overcome. Mm -hmm. And he says, if I have overcome, then I can assuredly say that you will overcome. In Job, as we conclude, we see that God, rather Job in all his suffering, in all his trouble, when he lost his children, when he lost his donkeys and the wife, the lesson writer says that God never Brother Job never doubted never God's doubted existence God. mm -hmm. as a Christian that is out there. The question today might be going through some suffering that you can never explain, mm. that no one else can ever explain. But one thing is for sure that God's character can only be revealed at the cross. the cross. Jesus Christ died for us. He cares for us. He cannot leave us get lost. True. If he came down here to die for us, then we will see to it that he delivers us from Amen. this sinful world. Amen. Um, thank you, Rose. Mm. Thank you so much. In conclusion, it is not about the existence of God that we question mm. or that we should draw our mind. It is about his character. Mm. When we are able to know the character of God, then we may not be able to ever doubt him again. Mm. When we know that God's character is a no loving character, mm the rest of it will fall into play. Yes. When we learn that the cross is our only salvation, mm. that when we look to the cross, then we understand God's sacrifice mm. for us. Mm -hmm. Then we are able to focus our eyes on him. Today, viewer, as we wind up, my prayer to you is that we, uh, we be able to learn to love God, mm. to learn to trust God, mm -hmm. to learn to understand that God's existence is for our benefit mm -hmm. and it is real and he's our creator. And in spite of the suffering that we may go through today, mm -hmm. he knows about it and he's working about it. Mm -hmm. he, he's working upon it. So we only need to trust him and we sit back and watch him work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, viewer. Let's humble ourselves for our closing prayer. Kind and gracious, loving Father in heaven, we are grateful for the trust you have in us to come about from them. We are grateful, Father, because we know that you love us. Help us, Father, when trouble seems to be striking. Somebody feels seems to be hopeless. For you to Somebody remind us to remind Somebody walks a path alone, watching others walk around, around and pass. Guide us, us. Somebody's in the street now. Somebody's in doubt. Somebody has no place to go. Somebody cries out, saying, Abba.